Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Communication. I hope you can see me okay and hear me okay. I've got a few animals here that um, would like to speak with me during today's session. And um, But before we get started, I wanted to um, talk about a couple of other things. And um, But then we will go into the readings and get a few readings done on some animals that people have sent in. So um, yeah, just to quickly start about um, connecting with animals and how beneficial it can be and what it can actually um the kind of information it can give you and how beneficial it is. Um, I was talking to a beautiful girl called Stella and she's a dog that um, I think she's got a, a broken leg at the moment and a few things going on. She was quite un unhappy. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Michelle. Great to see you here. So, um, yes, yeah, so I was talking to this beautiful girl and um, she gave me an information saying that she needed something and I wasn't quite sure even how you pronounce it but um, I've written it down so um, that's what I spelt so um, it didn't make sense to me hello Michaela good to see you so I think it, it was like Chris Chris Andrew or something it sounded a bit French to me and um, I googled it after I'd done the reading and um, because I wanted to find out what exactly it is that the dog required and I couldn't find anything that that sounded similar so I just told them, you know, this is um, what I'm getting from your dog. And um, same thing, they went on to Google it and couldn't find anything. And it only um, happened a bit later that they were talking um, to a herbalist and mentioned that word. And she said, oh, I know what it is. And um, so that's what she came up with. And as you can see, the spelling is a little bit different. But um, when you compare the two... <clears throat> You can see that is very similar. And um, if you look up, um, I don't know how you say it, it's actually a berry. And if you do look up what it is, it actually comes from that area where the dog originally is from. So the breed, where the breed comes from. So it is obviously something that this dog requires. And also when you look at the benefits of this product, it is quite um, similar to the symptoms that she had. So it made perfectly sense why she was asking for it. And it's funny because when we talk to the animals, sometimes it just doesn't make sense to us. And even if we Google it, we can't really find it. But um, yeah, so that was really great that they did actually manage to find out what it was that um, the girl wanted. And she's now on this product and she's happy to take it. So hopefully they will see a great benefit from it all. Um, the other thing I also wanted to talk about um, is how you, you train your animals. Hello, Anne. Great to see you. Oh, that's beautiful, Cindy. I do actually have a, a pet magpie in um, as well. They're absolutely beautiful animals. So great when they join us. Um, yes, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, how readings can be beneficial. I had a girl... Um, I think she was from from Europe or from America and she was training a horse and she was a bit stuck and she she wasn't quite sure um how she had to deal with the situation and um so I'm just answering Joe's um question she wanted to know if you can change the animal's behavior and yes you can change an animal's behavior animals are a bit like kids just because you um, ask them to do something doesn't necessarily mean that they do it. But if you can understand why they do it and um, you can explain things to them saying, you know, could you please do it a bit differently or ask them what you want from them. You can certainly change their behavior depending on the circumstances. So it's not a, a recipe that you can always change an animal's behavior. As I said, they're like us, you know. Just because someone else wants you to do something doesn't necessarily mean that you will do it. But it is something it can be very beneficial. And in some some cases, definitely you can change their behavior. So anyway, going back to this lady. So this lady was training her horse and she was a bit confused how she should go about. And she wasn't quite happy. The horse wasn't quite happy. And so she booked the horse in for a reading. And we've done a reading and I just received an email from her yesterday. I'll just quickly read this email just to give you a bit of an idea what can come out of a reading. Um, thank you so much for, for the reading. It has really helped me contextualize our training and has taken the pressure I was applying to myself off 
in terms of where we should be and where we are happy to be right now. One thing I forgot to ask, but you asked me was about her name. Um, sorry. Um, but yeah, the training has really changed our behavior and she is now happy to do what she wants to do and we have reached a different level. So we are now continuing our training, but I am happy and she is happy very as well, which helps us to understand each other better. And um, so it is just great to see that we can actually um, change an animal's behavior by helping them in a situation where they're not happy, they might be confused, and if we can explain things to them, we then might have happy animals. Hello, Natasha, good to see you. I did send you an email back uh, regarding your animals, so hopefully we can talk to your animals in next week's session. So if you can just reply to my email so I can have a bit more information on your beautiful dogs. Thank you very much. Okay, so I um, guess going back to readings, how they can help your animals by understanding them better. If we do understand what is going on, then we can make changes and have happy animals. And of course, if our animals are happy, we are happy as well. So that's great. Okay, so um, yes, as I said, we've got a few animals here that would like to have a chat to us. If that's okay, we will start with them now. So um, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Mojo. I'll show you the picture of him. That's him. He is a beautiful, I would say that he is a Great Dane. Or I should say he was a Great Dane. So he's not with us anymore, unfortunately. But absolutely beautiful boy. So his name is Mr. Mojo. And um, I'm not quite sure how old he was when he passed away, but yeah, he's not here anymore. He was sick in the end and um, I think they had to put him to sleep. So obviously there's questions around, you know, have we done the right decision and and um, what was going on with him. So um, yes, yeah, so I had a chat with him in the beginning and finding out what he says and how he feels. And he comes across like he's got a beautiful personality and he probably comes across a bit more like a human than actually a dog. So um, he's got a few traits that make you think that he's got a bit of human in him. And um, he's certainly a very special boy. I'll just show him to you again. This, this is here, Mr. Mojo. And um, so talking to him, he tells me that he's not always, he wasn't always aware of his size and um, not saying that he was a rough boy, but he's just saying sometimes he didn't actually realize that how, how big and strong and fast he is. Um, I think it's more of a fact he's saying, you know, like walking into things or running into things just because he does have quite a big size on him. And um, he tells me that he is, um, he was quite a sensitive boy and he even shows me or he tells me that he's a bit like an elephant in a um, with a mouse. You know, he's saying even though he was a really big boy that he was scared of little things sometimes. And again, that come across a bit more like a human than actually a dog. And um, talking about health, he's giving me a bit of a feeling of a headache um, on his on his temple area there. So that was something that concerned him when he was still with us. So whether there was even more going on than the owners knew, because um, he, d I think he did have a tumor, but um, not in his head as far as I know, but there was pressure there. So there's obviously something more going on than they knew. Um, he tells me that he's a good boy at heart and um, he was a real family boy. So he was happy to be in his family and he says that he was a happy and chilled and relaxed boy. So um, he's more of a human dog, a family dog than, you know, what he would say, a watchdog as such. And um, he tells me that he wasn't very demanding. For him, it was just important to be in the middle of it, to be part of it. I'll just show him again in case people have missed who we're talking about. We're talking about Mr. Mojo. So, yes, so for him, it was just important to be in the family, be part of it. And he didn't seem to be too complicated that he needed to have all the attention and that he was a complicated boy. And um, so for him, it was just important to be there. He tells me that he's got a sweet character. So he's, he's a bit of a darling and um, he said he's precious. And um, 
so yeah he said that he was only scary because of his size hello Beverly yes absolutely Beverly is asking whether it is possible that an animal that has been with you comes back to you and that is possible and we always want our animals to come back back to us but obviously they're not coming back exactly how they left us you know they might come back even in a different animal and sometimes we just see traits hello Kelly sometimes we just see traits of our dog that is now in the cat and we think hang on that was typical for my for my dog and now my cat is doing that so that's absolutely possible that your animal comes back in a different animal and that they come back to you again yes that is absolutely wonderful so it's great that um you can have your beautiful rottweiler girl being with you again and as i said we always want everything to be the same and i mean that's not possible they don't come back to us the same way they come back in a different body um, in a different form but i mean the great thing is that they can come back and spend some more time with us but anyway so going back to mr mojo saying that um, he was only scary because of his size. So he's saying he didn't really have anything scary on him, but obviously because he was quite a big boy, people could have been a bit scared of him, but um, he didn't do anything to scare people as such. <laughs> yeah, that's very cute, Beverly. And um, the question for Mr. Mojo was um, whether he knew how much he was loved. That is always something people want to know. You know, have we given them enough love to to keep them happy and to make sure that they knew that we love them? And um, he said he certainly did. So he was a boy that, again, he was a boy that didn't need much. So he was reading your body language and he was reading you very well. And he knew that you two had a connection. So he um, didn't really need much. Some animals can be quite needy and they need to sit on your lap and they need to have every second of your day. But he was not one of them. So he was quite happy to just be alongside you. And um, so he knew still how much you loved him. And um, he also tells me that he was a friendly soul. And he said he didn't really need much to feel special he said um it was just about being him and he was there he was part of him and that was great great for him that was fantastic that was all that he needed and um he said it for him it wasn't so much about having alone time again some animals can be quite clingy and they really want all your attention but he wasn't one of them he said he was just happy to be part of the family and that was enough for him the next question for him was whether he is happy and he said yes he was happy he said he was always happy um, and again he said to me again that he was a boy that was sometimes scared sorry for that so yes he was a boy that um, sometimes was scared of little things oh I'm sorry I'm sorry, Kelly, to hear that your boy has left your family. That is very sad. So if you want to get a reading done on your boy, just email all the information through and hopefully we can get to the um, can have a chat to him in the next session and answer some of your questions because I'm sure there will be some questions from you, maybe about his passing, about his health, how he was feeling and maybe even where he is now and how he's feeling where he is now. So going back to Mojo, whether he's happy, um, he said even though he, he was such a big boy, he was sometimes scared of little things. So he comes across a bit like maybe even like me, you know, being scared of little spiders. Me as an animal communicator, yes, I do connect with spiders as well, but they do scare me just mainly because they run so fast. Um, what else do you have from Mojo? And um, the owner also wanted to know whether he is happy where um, where she is keeping her ashes or whether she should move them and put them somewhere else. And um, he said that he still feels this strong bond that he has with her. So for him, it doesn't really matter where she has the ashes. He said that is more something for her because she needs them to be reminded of him and to still have that connection with him. But he's telling me that he still has that connection with him and he still seems to be around her and visiting. So for him, it is okay um, where she wants to have the ashes. 
that's fine with him. That doesn't really um, bother him. Hi, Madeline. It is my pleasure doing this show. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, if you would like to get a reading done for your animal, just feel free to send me some information and I'm happy to have a chat to your boy or girl. And um, you can find all the information um, in this video as well, um, where to send it and what to do. So, um, yeah, just feel free to send me the photos and some questions for your boy or girl. And so Mojo about his ashes, he just gives me this feeling of warmth and love. So he's had a beautiful connection with um, his owner. And again, he said, we don't need the ashes to connect. The connection happens on a, on a spiritual way. And, but it is something he feels that is imp important for the owners. So they don't forget about him. And um, he again said, we're always connected. And she also wanted to know um, whether she should light a candle for him more often. And this is again for him. He just says, you know, whatever is great for you, whatever works for you. And he said when she lights a candle, it helps her to remember him and to give her a peace, a moment in peace and quiet to take that time to connect with him. Because we're so busy. Sometimes we find it hard to connect with animals that have passed away. So if we can actually take that time and maybe have a little bit of a ritual where we do light a candle for our animals, that can certainly help us. So I think it's a great idea to light a candle. And as he said, if this is what you need to connect with me, that's great. Um, do that. Hello, Angela. Great to see you here. Thank you for joining us. And um, he said again that he's a, he was a special do dog um, because she made him feel special. So that's beautiful. And he said that they were very happy together. And he said that he loved the light and the sun. And he also feels that they had a very strong bond and that they felt like they belonged together. So she was saying that sometimes she felt a bit worried that um, she didn't give him enough attention. But again, Mr. Mojo said he is an easy boy. He was easy to please. And for him, it was more to be part of it, not to be in the center of it. So just being alongside you was good enough for him. So that was Mr. Mojo. So thank you very much for connecting with us and having a chat. Okay. The other beautiful boy that we have here. Thank you, Natasha, for sending that email. So we, I'll promise you that we will have a chat to your boys and girls in the next session, next Thursday night. Okay, the next one we have here is this beautiful boy here. Have a look at him. Isn't he absolutely adorable? This is Waffles. And unfortunately, Waffles is not with us anymore. He is, um, yes, he's, he's left his owners as well. He's passed away. Um, and so there's questions about him passing away. So we just want to have a chat to him, find out how he's going, how he enjoys his life with his owners and whether there's anything else that he wants to tell us. So that's Mr. Waffles. And just quickly to answer your question. Yes, um, if you would like to get a reading done for your little dog called Rusty, just send me an email. You can find the information in the text of this video, what you have to send me. And just send that through and then we can have a chat to your boy in the next session. And having animals with anxiety and attitude can absolutely help if we have a chat to them. We can find out why they have anxiety, what they need from us to change. And sometimes it can be an easy thing just by asking them, by telling them where we're going and what we're doing, giving them a job maybe. And if they have attitude, same thing. We need to find out why do they have attitude? What can we do to make them feel better about themselves you know with especially with little dogs it could be an attitude problem um because he's a little boy and he's got a little bit the the little dog syndrome so it is quite important that we do have a chat to them to find out why they're doing certain things and we can also ask them what we can do to help them so a lot of times animals with anxiety and attitude problems we can help them a lot and solve their issues and um, as i said if we can ask them what else they need from us we can implement that in their daily regime and help them by um by doing what they require and then we have happy animals which means that we can be happy as well 
Okay, so again, this here is um, beautiful Waffles, absolutely adorable boy, who is unfortunately not with us anymore. Okay, so I'm um, having a chat to Waffles. He comes across like an absolute beautiful boy. And um, he tells me that he, he was a bit of a frog. He said that he would leap and bound, whatever that means. So whether he had a bit of a funny jump on him. He does come across like he was quite an quite a playful boy and absolutely um, cuddly boy as well. And he also tells me that he's a casual boy, as in he comes across quite, quite easygoing. Um, he certainly knew what he wanted, but he wasn't a complicated boy as such. This one is Mr. Waffles. And um, he tells me that his owner and him would hang out a lot together. And it was really about connecting and and it comes across like they were just spending a lot of time together and being very close together, you know, just enjoying each other's company. It doesn't really matter what you do together. And um, he said that he was her sunshine. So it feels like he gave her a lot of energy as well and a lot of... Um, you know, happiness as such, being with animals in general just makes us happy. But it feels like these two that had a very special bond and he certainly helped her to, um, to um, yeah, to be happy and, and feel happy. And um, he also tells me that he was always waiting for her to come home. So he obviously knew when she was coming home. And he said that it never got bored. So it comes across like they'd had a lot of fun together and um, it didn't really matter what they did. Um, asking him for his character, he tell, tells me again that he's a sweet boy. He said that he's also, um, he was a cheeky boy, carefree. And um, he also thought that he, sorry, I'm just reading your message. Oh, she used to sing to him, uh, you are my sunshine. So that's why he was telling me that he was, her, sign, her sunshine, how beautiful is that? So, you know, people say that um, it doesn't matter what you say to them. It depends on the tone. It's not correct. So animals do understand your words. And if uh, Michaela is, is singing to him, you are my sunshine, and then he tells me that he was her sunshine, I mean, how much clearer can that get? You know, I mean, we haven't had any other animals in this uh, animal communication session live session to tell us that they are the owner sunshine he's the first one to say that so you can see that i've certainly had a connection with him that he can tell me something like that so this here mr waffles beautiful sunshine absolutely adorable i just love that photo that's why i picked that photo thank you very much for sending that through and um the the other thing he also said, which confused me a bit, but you might know exactly what he meant by that. He said to me that um, he was stinky. So I don't know if that was something else you called him or that he was a, you know, a little bit of a pig rolling in dirt. I'm not quite sure where that comes from, but that's probably something that you might understand better than me. And um, he also tells me that um, he would own you. So he feels that... Um, you were his his very special person and um you know there could have even been a little bit of of jealousy there and he just tells me that um yeah he felt very strongly for you and he didn't like to share you he also tells me that he was a boy that liked to explore so especially outside he's saying and he was also talking about cars and he was saying that um they would give him a comfy sleeping place so I don't know why he, whether he was talking about lying on a car's bonnet because it's nice and warm from the sun or something like that. That is also probably something that you know better than me. Um, you wanted to know um, what the story was, whether he was sick or why he died. That's, there seemed to have been a bit of a question around that. And talking him about his um, his passing and his time before he left, he said that he was internally ill and it really seemed like there were no signs. So it it was really coming. Oh, he was sleeping under cars, Michaela is just telling me. Oh, that's very gorgeous. Yeah, I felt it had something to do with the warmth, whether it was nice and warm under the car. As I said, I thought maybe you were sleeping on the bonnet, 
But yeah, he was definitely talking about cars, that that was um, a, a nice sleeping place for him. And um, thank you very much for clarifying that. And um, so getting back to his health, he tells me that he was internally ill and that there was no sign. So it really feels like you couldn't have known it. And it really feels like it came quite like a surprise. And um, he gives me a bit of a pain, mainly in his um, right body side. So there were issues there. Um, he was talking about his kidneys and there was definitely something going on there. I'm just quickly writing, reading Jade's message. Jade, um, I'm doing animal communication, so readings with animals. So if you would like to get a reading done for a person or some guidance, you probably need to watch a live session um, with people that do cards or something like that, because I probably can't help you with that. Uh, but if you do have animals, I'm more than happy to help. And hi, Jackie. Great to see you here. Okay, so getting back to beautiful waffles, who we've got here who tells me that he was her sunshine and she used to sing that song for him, which is absolutely beautiful. So um, he tells me that even on the day he left, there was sort of no quite, quite obvious signs what was going on. So again, it comes across a bit like a shock. And um, he even tells me himself that he didn't quite realize that he was sick. And... Um, he tells me that he was quite a tough boy as well. Hi, Sammy. Good to see you here. I hope um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have anim any animals, feel free to send me an email to get a reading done in uh, maybe the next session. That'll be great. So, yes, getting back to Mr. Waffles. Sorry, I'm just reading my notes. Um, he tells me that his passing seemed to have been quite peaceful for him. And and he, he actually, he said it was beautiful. He said it was pain-free. So even if, if you feel that it might not have seemed to you like that, he felt it was quite peaceful and and it didn't seem to, you know, upset or stress him in any, any way. And Michaela is just telling me he was a very tough boy. Yeah, and she's saying he left within 30 seconds. And I think because he was such a tough boy, he didn't even realize himself how sick he really was. And he didn't really give me a lot of pain to feel. As I said, there was some pain in the right side. And I felt there was something going on with the kidneys and probably the organs. And um, he said that he fell asleep and his heart stopped. So it just feels like, you know, there was nothing you could have done. He didn't give you any signs because he was so tough, so he wasn't a whinger and he wasn't, oh, I'm in so much pain, you know, you have to do something. He was just like, oh, yeah, life is good fun and, and I'm, a, I'm having a great time. So he didn't really understand what really was going on. And um, so it was a bit of a surprise. But saying again, he tells me that it was very peaceful for him and that he just, he said it was beautiful and pain free. And I know this is something that's really hard to hear, but I mean, it's great to hear that because it's great to know that our animals weren't suffering. And as hard it is for you, it is great to know that he is feeling, um, you know, that it, it wasn't a traumatic thing for him the way he left. And um, he also said, why are you sad? He said, we had so much fun. And that is so important, you know, to remember that um, you guys had such a great time together and to try to remember the nice times you two had together. And he said to see it a bit like a, a relative that is visiting. You, you know, he said, don't be upset. Don't, don't think about the bad times. He said, it's like me coming into your life. It's like a relative that comes and visits you during holidays. So, you know, you get really excited. It's fantastic that they are coming and enjoy their company. And then when they go home again, yes, it's sad, but we had such a great time. So just try to enjoy that beautiful time that you had with uh, waffles. And um, the other thing he also said is that you two were cuddling a lot. And he said, especially on cold, cold days. And he also tells me that he owned a bed. 
So I do feel that waffles do, did actually have a lot more room in bed that you did as cats in general and dogs do as well. So I think you didn't have a lot of room in your bed. But Mr. Uh, waffles tells me that he did have a lot of room and that he did own your bed. So that's very cute. And um, he said it was always nice and warm, something that he really liked. Yes, absolutely cuddly boy. So, um, so yeah, he said that he really appreciated that it was always nice and warm. That was something that he enjoyed. And um, in the end, he just said, thank you very much for talking to me. So it was really great to have him on the show and um, answer some questions for you, hopefully. And if you have any other questions um, about him, just let me know and I'm happy to answer them for you. So that was... This boy here, that was beautiful waffles. Absolutely adorable boy. Just quickly read the comments. Yes, absolutely. Animals do come back to us and the loss is always very hard. Yes, it's absolutely my pleasure to connect with animals, Sammy. So if you've got an animal you want me to talk to, just send it through and I'm happy to um, do hopefully a reading in the next session. So feel free to send that through so i'm just looking back because my cat has just joined us um okay let's get to the next one that we have here and as i said if anyone i've done a reading and if there's any other other questions let me know and you want to know whether waffles knows that um, you are pregnant and he says he actually tells me that he knew before you knew so animals are very switched on and even though he's not in a physical world with you anymore, he tells me that he's still with you and he tells me that he actually knew that you were pregnant before you knew that yourself. <laughs> yes, I can imagine Natasha, I do have a lot of animals too, but we can certainly have a chat to some of them. So um, yeah, just send everything through because I'm sure they have a lot to say as well. You got wrangles and tangles. That's very beautiful. Well, hopefully we can talk to them um, during the next session. And as you can see, my cat has joined us in the background here. He wants to be part as well. And um, he's a bit camera shy normally. So, but it's nice for him to just be in the background and be there. It was my pleasure, Michaela. So if you have got any other questions, please let me know. Yes, yeah, Sammy. Well, if you want me to connect to George... Just send me an email and um, hopefully we can have a chat to him in the next session. Okay, so um, the other cat I brought with me today is this one here. This absolutely beautiful boy. Oh, I'm probably holding it the wrong way. This one here is Tyler. Gorgeous boy. Okay, so the story with Tyler is what I heard from the owners that he's been missing for a few days now. And that we obviously want to find out a little bit what's going on and if he can give us some information what happened and where he went. So, um, yes, I connected with this beautiful boy. No, I'm holding it. No, this way. That's it. Okay, so beautiful Taylor. He's seven years old. And um, he's a rescue cat, as I told me. And connecting with him, he comes across like a boy that is a little bit shy. He tells me that he's curious. And um, he also tells me that he's a funny boy. He thinks he's clever. And he also tells me that he is loved and playful. And um, he also tells me that he loves to hide things. So that's obviously something I, I, me personally, I don't know, but the owners probably know what he's talking about. The other interesting thing he told me, I know him as Taylor. I know that he's a rescue cat, but he actually tells me that his name is Toby. So I wonder whether that would be something from his past before he came to you. I mean, it does sound quite similar. So, um, yeah, so he tells me his name is Toby. And he also tells me that he does have quite a luxury life now being with you. And that he's very happy. And he also tells me that, again, that he's a bit shy, especially with people he doesn't know. And um, so he, he's happy to not being in too close a contact with them. 
And um, he also tells me that he likes to be up high because he likes to have a good sleeping spot where he can see and sort of have a bit of a better overview. And um, so, yeah, but the main question with Taylor is about his disappearance and if he can shed some light for us what happened and where he went and why he disappeared. So talking to him about his disappearance... He tells me that he got himself into trouble. And um, when I speak to him, what exactly he means, um, he shows me an area. There seems to be a lot of grass. So to me, it looks a bit like a, a football, um, football, you know, grounds or something like that, where there's a lot of grass. And um, the other thing he also shows me, it looks a bit like a red brick house. And it's funny the area doesn't seem to be too busy, but it looks like, a, as I said, like a sports a sports place or a school or something like that um, that is in the area. And um, he's telling me that he was outside at the time. And he also tells me that he tends to look for food and not because he doesn't get fed enough, but he's just saying that's something he does. And because he's a rescue cat, that could also have been something that he used to have to look for food for survival. So, yeah, that's why he's telling me that he was looking for food. And But he makes it clear he's not saying that he didn't get enough food. Thank you very much, Ali, for sending me an email. And, yes, absolutely, send it all through. Oh, hi, Michelle. <laughs> Yes, he really loves his food. Yes, so you were saying there is a school. So as I said, I just see a lot of grass, like a sports sports area from a school maybe. And as I said, there's also a red brick house. The other thing, he also shows me like stairs or something that go down. And um, But it's funny because I don't see a lot of people. So to me, it, it seems to be quite empty at the moment. So I don't know if that's something... Um, you know, he went there when there's not no people there um, because he said it's it's really a busy area, but not on the other hand. So is it a bit of a like a country town or something like that? So it doesn't feel like it's a huge city, but there is um, oh, it's school holidays. Oh, OK, because, yes, that's right. School holidays. They've just started here. So um he shows me like an alleyway or something and I also see a bin which looks like one of those big, you know, the big containers. And um, he tells me that he got himself into trouble and I got the feeling that he got caught, whether he had a collar on and he got caught on something or whether he even, um, you know, got into something where he can't get out. And... Um, Because he tells me again that he is a curious boy, so it could be that he um, he did get himself into trouble, as I said, you know, maybe a, a rubbish bin or that he got into something where he couldn't get out or, or whether he had a collar on and he got caught on something. Um, he tells me again that he is a bit of a shy boy and um, so he does seem to be in a situation where he can't free himself and... It was interesting because he said that you should go again and have a look where you looked before. Because he said he would love to come far, come back. And I did get the feeling that he's not that far away from your place. And he said to look again in the same area. So it feels like you've been looking for him and he urges me to tell you to look in that same area again and just keep that in mind. You know, he said fences and, and yes, yeah, skip bin, exactly something like that. So, um, go looking in the same area. He doesn't seem to be too far away, but he seems to have got himself into trouble. So, um, just have a look around and have a look in, you know, bins and, and drums and, and anything he could have got himself into, especially because he tells me that he's looking for food, you know, a rubbish bin would make perfect sense. And um, yes, yeah, so look in that area again. And as I said, he tells me to tell you to look again in that same area, which sounds a bit to me like you've already looked in that area. 
So, um, yes, we'll leave it at that. And maybe, Michelle, you can give us an update on the story. And hopefully you can, um, yeah, hopefully you can find Taylor or Toby, I think he said his other name was. So whether, do you know anything about that? Was, was his name Toby before he came to you, maybe? Yes, yeah. But also, Michelle, um, remember to maybe put up signs. And, um, you know, someone might might look into something or, or hear him and they might be able to help you find him. That's always um, something animals even tell me. If there's missing animals, you know, they always tell me, put the signs up in the schools or in the shops or wherever. So um, that would definitely be a good, good thing to do. Yes, I, I hope as well that you can find him. Yes, yeah, well, maybe his name was Toby, but it's funny, it's quite similar, Taylor and Toby, so who knows. Okay, so that was beautiful, um, beautiful Taylor or Toby. And um, again, if everyone can just put in some good energy to hopefully um, bring beautiful Taylor home and help Michelle with some good energy, Mi uh, Michelle and Taylor. Thank you very much, Taylor, for talking to us. Okay. And then we have another beautiful boy here. And um, I, you're welcome, Michelle. It was my pleasure. And yeah, have a look and, and have a look in these areas. And hopefully you can, um, can shed some light into where he's gone. And hopefully you can find him. Yes, that can happen, Natasha. Um, that random animals contact us. Or, you know, when we're out on the roads and we see animals that they talk to us. Um, but we can also make that choice, you know, we um, obviously, you know, it's like people talking to us. We also need to um, have the time to talk to them. So if we're extremely busy, then um, they might not be able to get through because our mind is, is on something else and is quite busy. Okay, so the next one I have here is this one here, which is beautiful Glenn. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Look at his beautiful face. I mean, which animal is not gorgeous? They're absolutely adorable. So this is beautiful Glenn. He's, um, I think he's a purebred Kelpie and he's not with us anymore. We've got um, a few animals that have passed away. And as I said, there's always a lot of questions around. Have they been happy with us? And if there's anything we could have done different. So the owners wanted me to connect with, with beautiful Glenn. <clears throat> okay, so talking to Glenn... Glenn tells me that he is a fun dog and he also tells me that he's very serious. <laughs> yes, well, I do enjoy talking to animals. Natasha, absolutely right. Because animals are funny and, you know, they, um, yeah, they, in general, they don't lie to us. They're always open. They just talk in a nice way to us. They only tell us nice things, you know. And they treat us with respect. So talking to animals is absolutely a great thing to do. So, yes. Okay. But anyway, talking to beautiful Glenn. He tells me he's a fun boy. He's very serious as well, though. Or I should say he was very serious. So he tells me that he did have good work ethic. And he also tells me that he understands the language. So I would say that he probably did understand the command, commands very well when you told him to do something. and But he again tells me that he was a very good, um, that he was a fun boy. So um, again, talking about a good work ethic. So I think we have a dog here that had two things, good work ethic, but he was also a fun boy. And he tells me that he had lots of love to give. So he was a very um, open dog that was shining. Um, he tells me he was playful and he was a great companion. You wanted to know whether he was happy. And he tells me that you knew that he was happy. And he tells me you knew because you saw it in him. So he seems to have been a dog that was just always smiling and that he was happy. He tells me just that he wasn't happy if he couldn't come with you. So he obviously wanted to be part of it and he didn't want to left, be left behind. So when he got left behind, then he wasn't happy. So that was something that, that he didn't like. But apart from that, he's saying he was a boy. He was always happy. 
and um, he tells me that he liked the water and swimming and he said that especially when it was hot that was something that he did enjoy and um, he shows me dry country and he shows me sheep so I wonder whether that is something that he experienced it did come across a bit like a drought that he wasn't in an, in an area where there was a drought and yeah, whether he has worked with sheep, that was something that came up that he's talking about sheep. Um, he says to me that he loved, he called it his yum yum food, which is very cute. And he tells me that you used to prepare it, especially for him. So I'm not quite sure whether he got some of your food whether when you cooked that he got something for, of it as well or wh whether you did actually actually specifically cook food for him and he tells me that his food was as good as yours as in he's saying he ate as well as you did so i'm not getting the impression that he got you know cheap canned food but that he actually had very good quality food and but he did tell me that he liked everything so he didn't seem to be an extremely fussy dog what he got to eat and he tells me that he, he liked, liked his vegetables as well and he tells me that he enjoyed to be spoiled with you and he really seems to have had a luxury life and comfort with you and he said that he was very comfortable so again it comes across like you were spoiling him which was really nice for him <coughs> he also tells me that he is still with you and he tells me that he's often sitting outside with you he tells me that he's enjoying the view in the evening so not quite sure if you in the evening you're sitting outside somewhere on the veranda and he just gives me the feeling that he's sitting alongside and just looking out in the open enjoying the view and enjoying the quiet the peace and quiet at the end of the day and um, he also tells me that you can still feel him and that you still have a connection with him is this an animal you have Kim um, Gypsy if you want me to do a reading just email me everything through and then hopefully I'll have time in the next session to connect with beautiful Gypsy but um, at the moment we're having a chat to beautiful Glenn Glenn tells me that um, you know that he's still around you and he also tells me that um, he watches you in the kitchen and in the garden so it feels a bit whether that was he was near you when you used to be in the kitchen or in the garden and that he's still there watching you as well and um, he also tells me that you have a very good heart so I feel that he got a lot of lot of love from you and um, he said that he has always been a farm dog at heart so I just feel that you know his his DNA his genes he just yeah he just sort of knew what a farm dog does and he would um sort of that was just something that was in his blood even though I, he comes across like he was a nice boy and he would take on any task that you had for him and he also wanted me to tell you um to thank you for loving him so um it really feels like he got a lot of love from you which which is absolutely beautiful and asking him what happened he tells me that he got old even though he wasn't that old I think he was 10 years old when he passed away it seems to have been an age related issue why he is not with us anymore and he just simply said yeah he, he got old and um, he tells me again that he had a heart of gold but he also says that's why you two had a connection because he you had a heart of gold as well he also tells me that he was a bit sneaky so whether that's something with stealing food and things like that so again he just comes across quite sharp and clever and intelligent so I guess that's um, the two things he said he's a funny boy but on the other hand he's also a cheeky boy and um, yes he probably um, took a bit of advantage of that sometimes just being a sneaky boy and and getting away with little things you might have not even known that that was him yes so that was my connection with beautiful Glenn here and as I said before so Glenn is not with us anymore 
but he comes across like an absolutely beautiful boy and it looks like he had a fantastic home as well with his owners which is absolutely great to know okay so um just yeah i think um we won't have time to do another animal but we will have a lot of time next time in next week's session so if you would like to get a reading done um it can be animals that have passed away animals that are missing or just with your animals that are with you if you have any problems questions anything you want to know it is important to ask questions because if you don't ask questions they might just talk about things that are important to them and um, especially for example a horse a horse lives in a paddock 23 hours a day so if you have a chat to a horse they might talk about things that concern them in the paddock you know my water is not clean or I don't like that tree in the paddock I don't like the other horse or um, you know whatever is happening in their daily situation but we of course want to know why did my horse not behave well at a dressage competition hi good to see you you know why did my horse not behave at the dressage competition why did my horse not get onto the float but horses might not think of that because, you know, they live in a paddock 23 hours a day. So whatever happens in their paddock situation would, you know, um, be much more important than things that happened last weekend. So if we want to have specific answers, we definitely have to ask those questions because otherwise we might just get general information. And then often people say, oh, you know, I just want some general information. And if we connect with the animal, then there's always questions coming up and they go, oh, I should have asked that and I should have asked that. So it is important to ask questions so you get your, your questions answered. But yeah, as I said, we can connect with animals that have passed away, animals that are still with us and anything is possible. So feel free to email everything through and I'd love to have a, uh, um, have a chat to your animals, connect with them. And we have a lot of great animals waiting for us for our next session which is going to be next Thursday so yeah feel free to send it all through if you have any questions please feel free as well to ask here or even send me an email and I'm more than happy to answer any questions about animal communication how it works and let you know um, yeah how it all works because my mission in life is to help animals and the more animals I can help, that's just fantastic. That's why I'm here. So if if I can help animals, then the people are happy and everybody's happy. So that's great. Thank you very much for your nice message, Amanda. Yes, I remember talking to Buddy and also your beautiful um, girl, I think it was. Was it a boxer? Can't quite recall. Yeah, they were absolutely beautiful. They're two animals that have passed away. And I'm glad that I was able to to bring you some closure with their passing and whether you've done the right things. And I think did Buddy say about um, white feathers? And you're just telling me that you um, about white doves this afternoon. Yes. So you know we can ask them. Can you give me any sign that you're okay? Or you know what's the sign? How do I know that you're still around you? And you know they might. Um, in Amanda's case, it was about the white feathers. Of course, yes, Cleo. Yes, that's right. Talking to beautiful Cleo as well. I remember she was absolutely beautiful. I remember the photo you sent in of her lying on the bed. Yes, so anyway, um, if you have any questions, let me know. And if you have animals you want me to connect with, feel free to send it through. I'm really excited to talk to your animals next week. Hi, Jade. Yes, there you go, Amanda. So that is obviously a clear sign from beautiful Buddy. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, we're at the end of tonight's show. It was great talking to you all. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Send everything through. I'm really excited to talk to your animals. Make a difference for you and your animals. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And um, we'll connect again next week. Take care and we'll see you then. Bye. Thank you, Amanda. Bye.